Happy Sunday, everybody. You have all been enjoying the Bloom Brew. <laughs> Not getting totally sick of Rakdos prowess yet. Um, so every Sunday, what I like to do is I like to go over the off-meta picks. And since the meta hasn't really been established yet, I, did, I just picked the uh, four decks that interested me the most. So the other thing that I do, if you're new here, is I put up a poll every Sunday along with this video about which deck you are most interested in seeing a gameplay video of that I will do next Saturday. So look for that if you want to place your vote. So the first one here is Mono Green Stompy by Sawars, piloted by Sawars. Um, the other thing is I my criteria is that it has to be above a 60% win rate and it has to have at least 50 matches and it had to be successfully piloted into Mythic. So all of these decks can hit Mythic and um, they've got something good going on. So this one is centered around counter synergies. So we've got the um, Innkeeper's Talent that we got in Bloomborough, being able to give something uh, like a Luminarch Aspirin effect, putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature. Um, especially the level two, I think really helps the uh, counter space, um, being able to give all of your creatures ward one, makes it so that you're a little less prone to getting blown out by interaction. Um, Hunter's Talent we also got in Bloomborough, um, being able to be kind of like a fight spell and removal, but then also giving your creature plus one plus zero and trample, which was a big part that this deck was missing was like, how do you actually get the trample through if you're not doing like the gold vein Hydra that we got in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, the one downside is that like the interaction is somewhat limited and um, so a lot of like Simic decks and mono green decks will be running hard hitting question for the uh, one mana bite spell. And um, being able to, you know, this being the problem with this being against mono red prowess, how do you interrupt the turn three slick shot show off? And this deck doesn't really have an answer for it. Um, outside of this, somewhat answers it because it, unless they put a demonic ruckus on it, we can block it with the scrap shooter. So I think this is our really our good card against the um, mono red prowess, Rakdos uh, prowess builds, um, being able to have that reach. And then um, as far as like gifting a card, it's a new mechanic. So you can give them a draw card. And then if you do, you destroy an artifact or an enchantment. Uh, most of the time, I don't think this is actually going to be gifted unless the uh, <laughs> the specific circumstances arise, right? Um, Trailblazer, we've seen a lot of uh, through Outlaws of Thunder Junction being explored as a way to generate card draw. So anytime a creature with power four or greater enters, you draw a card, which works with the Scrap Shooter as well as the Bloated Contaminator. Bloated Contaminators uh, proliferate, um, allows you to copy the counters that you already have. So this being able to pump your entire board if they have plus one plus one counters on them from like the Innkeeper's Talent. Um, we've also got the Flourishing Bloomkin, which is really great for the mono green space, getting power equal to the amount of force you control. They're not counters, so keep that in mind that it's just its power. Um, Sharp Eyed Rookie gets a counter on it and investigates every time that you play something that's larger. So um, this one it fits into the counter theme. And then um, Keen-Eyed Curator is one that we got in Bloomborough and gives us some like ability to affect our opponent's graveyard. If it goes down to that, I, most of the time I think that the decks or the games are gonna be too quick for you had to actually exile four different card types to be able to give this the plus four plus four and trample. But just as a three three, it's a aggressively statted. And um, we also got the Paw Patch Recruit, which is a two one with offspring. And whenever your opponent uses interaction to destroy your creatures, you can then put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control other than the one that got uh, targeted. And then Evolving Adapted also gets a plus one plus one counter for each creature that's coming into play, like the Sharp Eyed Rookie. So we don't have the uh, Honoring Tumblewag or anything like that um, that I've been kind of exploring in, in my mono green build. Um, but I like where this deck is going, and um, that will be number one on the poll. Oh, and in case I didn't rem uh, remember to mention it, <clears throat> this one went 34 and 16. So just barely hitting that 50 game mark for a 68% win rate into Mythic. And I did just realize that that list was being played in best of three. So um, I try to keep them to best of one lists. Um, I do think that that one looks interesting in best of one as well. Um, 
So yeah, <laughs> the second one is going to be Mono Black Discard by Lazy Goblin, which went 49 and 33 for a 60% win rate in the Mythic. And we're definitely going to see some form of Mono Black space emerge um, that I think is going to be just a meta deck because uh, Black got a lot of tools. So um, the new cards that are coming in are the Iridescent Vine Lasher, being able to play this out on three and, and then start double pinging for every land that you play, or just play it out on one and then start pinging your opponent for one uh, each land that you play. Seems like Vine Lasher is going to see a lot of um, a lot of play in in, in the uh, new season. Ruthless Negotiation is a three for one. So you make their opponent exile a card, and then if you flash it back, they exile another card and you draw a card. So this one's a really great value piece, and really curious to see which decks this one slots into as well. Uh, we've got the cut down and the uh, bitter triumph uh, instead of the go for the throat for the interaction against mono red. Feed the cycle is one that's being uh, the pilot was exploring here over cut down over bitter triumph. Um, being able to be a murder, or if you can forage, being able to be an instant speed one black for removal. And the downside with this is that like the deck isn't foraging particularly well. There's no food production. There's no real way to build your graveyard outside of like discarding to bitter triumph. So really curious to see how feed the cycle plays. Um, and then bandits talent, being able to hate on your opponent's hand, as well as the um, hostile investigator and Lily and the thought stalker warlock really um, is going to help this against control. I haven't bumped into too much control, but being able to attack your opponent's hand definitely helps you with the mid-range and the control matchups. Uh, Preacher of the Schism being a really great death touch blocker. Uh, same with Shieldred. Uh, we've seen these uh, explored quite a bit. Gix's Command, the versatility off of Gix's Command is so amazing. Um, being able to give you that life stabilization through the plus one plus, uh, two plus one plus one counters and lifelink, or being able to wrath the board, um, return creature cards from your graveyard in a control matchup. Uh, it's one of my favorite cards. And then we've got Akalazot's Deepest Betrayal, which helps stabilize against the early aggression if we can make it to the Akalazot's. And then Virtue of Persistence is removal um, that gains you life in the aggro situation and then later becomes a late game win condition. So um, this one is running four copies of the Fabled Passage. I was kind of curious to see uh, how much play the Fabled Passage actually sees. Uh, I'm not 100% convinced on the Fabled Passage, um, but... You know, this is why I use a tracker to remove my bias. So that will be number two. The third list that caught my attention was Jund Aggro. And um, this is basically the same thing as like Mono Red Prowess being called Rakdos Prowess because you have the Callous Cell Sword. You do not need black to play this card, right? Because what you're playing it for is the adventure burned together. And um, so what we're doing is we're, we're kind of... Um, what this deck is doing that's unique to it, though, is playing the Voldaren Thrillseeker, which allows us to be able to sacrifice a creature to deal damage equal to its power to any target. This allows us to basically have more copies of the Callous Cell Sword so that we can do the triple damage, <coughs> excuse me, off of uh, Heartfire Hero or Cacophony Scamp. So both of these, if they deal damage to your opponent and then you sacrifice it, their ability triggers again where they deal damage equal to their power. So if you can get this up to like six, for example, you would deal 18 damage in one turn. A lot of turn threes are enabled by this sp specific combo and um, throwing the Thrill Seeker in there even leans more heavily into that. Then this deck also similar to Mono Red is a little bit less prone to the single point interaction of them blowing up, say your Slick Shot show off with a cut down or a shock and um, extends a little bit further into the mid range by using Ozolith to create plus one plus one counters the Honorary Tumblewag, which can double those plus one plus one counters, and then you can still do the fling or the uh, backup sacrifice for some extended reach. We've got one copy of the Innkeeper's Talent to uh, give this the Luminarch Aspirin effect and the ward, and um, War Squeak is one that I've been seeing explored in some decks, in, including in the Mono Red Prowess, um, being able to give something permanently plus one plus one and haste. And then we've got Audacity to push Trample Damage. The only card that I don't really like in this build is the Reckless Lackey. I'm not 100% sure why this was included. Um, the First Strike can be helpful, though, maybe in a slowing down the pace of Mono Red, um, while also being an aggressive card in and of itself. And <clears throat> so I think this one will be curious to see if it ends up performing better than all of the Rakdos 
uh, prowess decks, like the one that I covered that hit Mythic number one. And um, <clears throat> during my quest for looking for Mythic decks that are doing interesting things, there were a lot of Rakdos prowess decks. So Rakdos Prowess is definitely going to be here to stay, and uh, we're going to see it being fine-tuned to its uh, perfect form. On Monday, I'll be talking about the uh, meta meta decks, and so really curious to see how that goes. I haven't really looked at it yet because the meta has been shifting so much. So by Monday, we'll hopefully see something settle down, and um, looking forward to talking about that on Monday. Um, so this one will be number three on the poll. Really curious to explore this space. And the fourth one, for those who are sick and tired of aggro, I did find a control list that was successfully piloted into Mythic, uh, Boros Control by Mana Forked. <laughs> and uh, it was 56 and 23 for a 71% win rate. So it's the most winning deck of the four. And, um, we, you know, the, the Boros Control space was doing... Um, it, it is able to do the control thing, right? And it tended to lose out against the Azorius control builds um, because it doesn't, you know, that one usually comes down to who has the most amount of counter spells. So now that Azorius control is struggling a little bit, um, especially with everybody running Cavern of Souls, um, I think that there's a good, this is a good time to explore the Boros control area. And... Uh, so we've got a lot of the, you know, the only new card in here is Beza, which I know it's not perfect, but I think this is going to be as good as we get for a replacement for the mono, uh, for the Wanderer Emperor, um, especially in a deck that cares less about the flash aspect, um, because it gives, gives you kind of like a sunset revelry built into a creature, especially against mono red. It's not uncommon for this to gain you four life and create two one, one tokens. And then, um, the draw probably happens less 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 often, but still a really great stabilizing force um, in slot four. And then we've got the Urbrask's Forge and the Tokashia's Welcome as a way to kind of outgrind our mid-range opponents. Temporary Lockdown to slow everything down if we're coming up against aggro. Lightning Helix is probably the best option along with Torch the Tower for answering the Slickshot show off in Mono Red Prowess. Same with Elspeth Smite. So lots of tools here to counter all of that Rakdos prowess we're seeing. Um, we've also got the Wrath of the White Sun's Twilight. Um, Get Lost gives us some instant speed interaction too. So <clears throat> lots of ways here. Um, we're also eliminating the uh, board. So we're, what this deck is going to struggle against is something like the discard deck, where then you really hope to get the forge down and for them to have no ability to answer that. One copy of the Bandit's Hall here for um, giving us some card draw as we commit crimes with all of our targeted removal. And, um, you know, probably don't need to introduce Sunfall, but this is one of the best wraths that we've had because of the exile effect, getting around mm -hmm. uh, death triggers and then also creating a creature in the form of an incubator token. Sunfall is going to be in the control space for sure. Um, oh, sorry, there was one other... Uh, card <laughs> brought in from Bloomborough, and that one's Fountain Port. So being able to sacrifice a token um, works off of the tokens created by Urbrask's Forge. So um, you can attack with your token first and then sacrifice it for card draw with Fountain Port. So I think that's some, an, inter an interesting synergy. So that one will be number four. If you'd like to see some control, vote for it on the poll. So... I uh, hope you all had a wonderful weekend, and I will catch you all tomorrow for the best of one, best of three meta review. And uh, really curious to see how the tournament space is using, utilizing the new cards, and really curious to see, as always, how the tracker data is, is what, the, what the tracker data says is the best performing deck in best of one. So uh, take care, everybody. I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>